So today we're here on Church Street and we're going to find out from people whether we actually require coding to develop applications or not. Hey Macha, give me that board. So let's go. So I want you guys to keep in mind that this is not a regular reaction video. This is not yes or no. This <laughs> is Thank you so much. Who would have thought that the only time that people are willing to argue is while they're eating? Kind of ironic if you ask me. Thumbs up. Oh, thumb up. Thumbs up. Yeah. <laughs> Man forgot English. Hey, can I hold it for once? Yeah, by all means, bro. By all means. We've got another supporter, ladies and gentlemen. Go no code. <laughs> Stay till the end to find out the explanations behind their answers and my reactions. Yeah, so uh, building apps does not require a coding is a statement. But I believe uh, against this because I myself am an app developer. Uh, so my point is that, you know, although you can make a lot of things without using no code technologies, uh, when you, if you want to really control the fine, minute details of uh, of building the application, you need code for that because at the end of the day, there's only so much you can do with what you see is what you get tools. Uh, you need if you need fine-tuned control, you have to have uh, code. Fair enough. But I feel I I would like to look at it that as a scaling issue. The reason that I didn't agree with that is going to be explained in the studio. You know, when it comes to building an app, a lot of people get ahead of themselves worrying about scaling and performance issues before they even get their product out there. But I've got a different perspective on this. First things first, okay? Develop your core application and get it into the hands of real users out in the market. Don't get bogged down by optimizing and fine tuning everything for massive scale from the very beginning. Launch your minimum viable product first. See if people actually want to use your product or your application. So once you've got good traction and usage, then you can call in the coding experts. They'll be able to diagnose places where your app is hitting performance bottlenecks as it scales up. That's when you make targeted optimizations based on real user data. Like, hey, we need to work on how we handle these database queries, or this logic needs to be refactored for better caching. That deep tuning and preparation for scalability, it can come later once you actually need it. Don't jump the gun on premature over-engineering. Get your app out into the world first, then level up for scale once you've proven the product market fit. I don't agree with this basically because you have control over the entire code and you'll understand your code better than whatever the AI or no code is doing. But while building the app also, uh, like, you create some functions, you create some logic, right? We personally disagree that coding an entire app manually leads to better optimization. Research done by Forrester, a research and advisory company, shows that low-code platforms can generate code that's up to 90% as performant as handwritten code, while being much faster to build at the same time. While it may be tempting to handwrite every line of code for your application, this approach can actually lead to lower quality code and slower development times. Although the third guy made a really valid point. But first, before we dive into that, let me show you this research paper that we found by Google, which found that developers who use pre-built libraries and frameworks are able to produce higher quality code with fewer bugs than those who handwrite every line of code. The paper also found that developers who use pre-built libraries and frameworks are able to complete tasks up to 50% faster than those who handwrite every line of code. By using pre-built tools and platforms, developers can focus their expertise on the truly distinctive components of their application, rather than getting bogged down in repetitive tasks. Now, on to the third guy. So if they introduce new technology or something like that, like digital sensor or something, to make it adaptable to the app, again we have to write our code. So we just need code. So Absolutely, <coughs> yeah, okay. I think, okay, that's one point over here. I agree with that 100%. So if they introduce new technology or something like that, like digital sensor or something. This refers to a scenario where a new technology, such as a digital sensor or any other hardware component is introduced. And this needs to be integrated into an existing application or system. To make it adaptable to the app, again, we have to write our code. In order to make the new technology or hardware component work seamlessly with the existing application, the development team needs to write additional code or modify the existing code base to accommodate the new functionality or integration. So we just need code. The implication is that the primary requirement for integrating new technologies or hardware components into an existing system is writing the necessary code to handle the integration and enable the desired functionality. So yeah, this guy is getting cash for sure, bro. <laughs> okay, my sources are telling me that you would have received the money. Is that true? Yeah. That is true. Yes, a hundred rupees has been received. Thank you for your valuable insight. Good. Like if you want to make a wallpaper app, then you can make it without coding. But if you want to make a full stack app like Instagram or Facebook, something like, like that kind of thing, then you need to do coding. Huh? No. 
So the explanation for this one is when he means a wallpaper app, he's referring to basic landing page websites, not full functional web applications. I disagree with the claim that you can only build simple websites without coding, but need code for bigger apps. These days, there are platforms that allow you to create web apps and mobile apps through visual tools and pre-built components without writing code. Agreed that making proper web apps will require a technical person who understands logic building. While coding may still be needed for highly customized apps, it's inaccurate to say that coding is required for anything beyond basic websites. Many businesses successfully build and scale reasonably complex applications using these no-code and low-code platforms without extensive coding. No, but uh, like if you want a seamless backend integration to your application, then you can't do without coding, right? However, I agree with the second point about needing coding for seamless backend integration. Building applications that seamlessly integrate with backend systems, databases, or third-party services often require custom coding. No-code tools have limitations when it comes to complex integrations and handling intricate data flows. Writing code allows developers to have granular control over how the application communicates, processes, and handles data from various sources. So he's also given us an example over here, and we're going to show it to you right now. Supposingly, if you're using Kafka for your backend, how can you do it without coding? If you have many pipelines. Okay. Show that! Show that on camera! <laughs> show that on camera! <laughs> she gave a crazy argument just now. <laughs> <laughs> He's given such a crazy argument. We were about to give him the cash, but we wanted to surprise him with a little bit of confetti. <laughs> Alright, Sandeesh, my sources have confirmed that the money has reached your account. Can you confirm that for us? Yeah, I can confirm here. Yeah. So can look in the camera. The argument about no code versus traditional coding is far from over. We still have a lot of skepticism. We have a lot of support as well. But with the amount of technology that's growing on a day to day basis, it's really hard to figure out whether no code is an absolute or whether it's just a temporary fix. But with that being said, comment your thoughts below on whether no code is actually going to take over or traditional coding is going to take over. Continue the conversation and make sure you don't forget to subscribe to stay tuned for more content like this. Until then, keep building.